Today is an exciting day because I just got access to the beta version of Ableton Live 11. And in this video I will show you everything that is new. My name is Matt Flagg, let's get started. Alright, so let's start off by taking a look at the big changes in Ableton Live 11. And the one that everyone has been looking forward to is obviously comping. I'm gonna quickly show you how to do comping and how it works. So first you select the region that you want to loop the recording to. So I'm gonna loop a four bar recording session on my piano. All right, so I recorded two eight bar loops and in the first part I made a very big mistake as you could hear. So now let's open the comping section. To do that, you go to the track, right click and select show take links or you use the shortcut control alt u. And now you can see all the different takes. And you can now see that this take has the same color as this one. So now this one is selected. But let's say I liked the last part of this take more. Then I can highlight it, press enter. And now this part is introduced in the main lane. I can also select an entire take by using this speaker icon right here. And as you can see, now only this entire take will play. Then lastly, you can also insert a new take lane in case you want to make some adjustments manually, but I'm not going to do that. So that's it for the takes. Now, something else that is new is MPE compatibility, which allows us to use MPE controllers. Basically what they do is you think about those rolly C boards that allow you to play the piano like you play a guitar by moving your fingers up and down the keys. So you can control multiple parameters at once but that is only in case you have an MPE controller. Now, one of the biggest changes I think in Live 11 is probably the MIDI clip editor and we will take a look at that right now. So I have this MIDI clip right here and immediately when I open it, it's full screen, but you can obviously make it smaller. Immediately what you notice is that everything has been shifted around a little bit. The controls here are basically the same. We have the start time of this clip, the end time of this clip, we have the loop button that we can turn on or off. Then we can set the loop position by using this one, time signature, groove. But then what is interesting is the scale functionality, which is completely new. So let's say I cannot play piano, but I want to draw in some MIDI notes. I can make this new MIDI clip, turn on scale. And right here I can select any scale. So let's say I want to be in G, uh, let's say G Locrian. And now I can see all the notes of G Locrian highlighted in the piano roll. If I want to see only the notes that are in the scale, I can just press scale right here and it will only show the notes in this scale. Let's turn off this again and take a look at the next tab, which has also been changed. And now there are three tabs right here. Let's start off by taking a look at the first one. I'm going to go back to my old MIDI clip. But what's new is the randomize. I can select some notes. Let's select these ones. And if I then click randomize, you will see the velocity randomize right there. And I can select the randomize range and change it to something smaller, as you can see. What's also cool is we can adjust the velocity range. Let's say that I want this to loop, but I want the notes to also have a chance to play some louder velocities every once in a while. Then I can increase the velocity range and you can see this by the blue strokes that are being drawn. I can also adjust them by holding control or command and dragging up or down. And you can see every time I play it, the velocity is different. Sometimes it's loud, sometimes it isn't. So now let's take a look at the next tab, which allows us to have linked or unlinked loop regions. What does that mean? So if I have envelopes right here, let's say I have the MIDI control and I have my modulation wheel. Now, if I draw in some modulation like this, I can have it linked. So now the modulation start and end position of the loop is going to be the same as my modulation of the clip. But if I unlink it, I can have a separate starting point and ending point for the modulation envelopes than I have for the clip. So that's pretty cool. I can turn also loop on separately from the clip. So now the clip is not looping, but the envelopes are. So that is pretty nice. Now we also have note expression. 
and this allows us to add note sliding and pressure if your instrument supports it. I know this grand piano supports sliding so I'm going to take a look at that. We can also turn on velocity and release velocity by using these little buttons. So let's say I want to add some slides. Let's make this bigger. Let's say I want to make this note slide a little bit. You can see if I highlight the note this line pops up and I can create automation points and then automate the slide of this single note. Let's take a listen. I can also adjust the curve. And I can also do this for different notes so I can slide them individually, which is pretty nice. And if I have this note selected, I can also override the slide by going down here and adding a different envelope. By the way, I might miss some features, but if I do, you can look on the Ableton website yourself, which will be linked below, or you can tell me in the comment section and keep everyone up to date that is watching this video. And then something else that is new that is really cool is that I can now edit multiple MIDI clips at the same time. So let's say I have two MIDI clips. I'm just going to duplicate this one for demonstration purposes, add it to a new MIDI track, give it a new color to make it stand out. And now if I select both these MIDI clips, I can transpose them both at the same time by selecting the notes and dragging them around and now both MIDI clips will be transposed, which is really nice. You couldn't do that before, so you can basically transpose every single MIDI clip in your project at the same time. However, you can also go back to the regular MIDI clip editor by pressing this focus button and now you can choose which MIDI clip you edit by clicking on the colored line right there. Another editing thing that you can do now is you can select multiple tracks, right click, link tracks. And now you can see this chain icon appears and these tracks are now completely linked. Not as in I adjust the volume on this track and the other one will adjust, but if I edit something on this MIDI track, the MIDI on the other one will also adjust. So let's say I don't like the section in this MIDI clip, I can select this one, delete it, and it will also be deleted in the other linked MIDI clip. So that is it for the MIDI and audio functionality, I think. So now let's take a look at some new Ableton Live devices. The first one being Hybrid Reverb. Let's search for it. And what Hybrid Reverb is, it is a combination of convolution and algorithmic reverb, reverb, which allows you to make any reverb room. I'm not going to go over the full functionality of these effects and new Ableton devices. This is just a showcase of what they are and how they sound. If you want the full tutorial, comment below and I might make one. So let's take a listen to this new reverb. This is kind of a hybrid between the previous reverb and the convolution reverb that was already there in Max for Life. So that sounds pretty cool. Let's take a look at the next effect, which is a spectral resonator. And what this does is it basically breaks the spectrum of the incoming audio signal and will tear it apart. Maybe this is not the best kind of audio to showcase this on, but I'm gonna try anyway. Yeah, you can definitely make some really cool granular stuff with this. I, I see myself using this a lot to do some cool sound designing. And I also really like the interface of the display, the way it showcases everything is really nice. Yeah, I, I'm kind of getting lost already. So now let's take a look at the next effect that is new, which is spectral time. Let's go to audio effects, delay and loop, spectral time. Mm -hmm. 
Basically what spectral time is good at is creating some metallic echoes or frequency shifted and reverb like effects. So next up are inspired by nature and pitch loop 89, which are some effects and instruments, but I cannot find them in my beta version of Ableton Live 11. So I suppose Ableton release will release them with the full version of Ableton Live 11. Now let's take a look at some updated devices. First we have Chorus Ensemble. So basically Chorus and Ensemble are now in one effect. It's an updated version of Chorus. What is new is the vibrato. We can also spread the left and right channels in the stereo field by using the width slider. And then we have a thick three delay line chorus. Let's take a listen. This kind of turns my piano into a honky tonk piano, which is pretty nice. Okay, so for the next effect, we have Redux and not too much has changed here, but there is just some new knobs to create some new cool effects. Let's take a listen. Obviously it doesn't sound too good on a piano, but you can find out yourself what this will sound good on. Next up we have the phaser slash flanger and also these are now combined into one effect. This now generates a lusher sound with more frequency and modulation range ranges to change. Let's take a listen. I think it sounds really nice, some of these presets, I'm a big fan of this new effect. There is also a new doubler mode which you just heard in the end, I'm gonna show it to you again. Which basically doubles the sound as you can hear. Okay, so next up we have a new feature in Ableton Live, which is live tempo following. By default this feature is off, but you can turn it on by going into the preferences, link, tempo and midi tab. And then here we have the tempo follower and you have to set this to show. By default it is hidden, but if I set it to show, you can see that now this follow button appeared. What this is good for is if you want to record a live band for example, and let's say you want the Ableton tempo to be dependent on the drummer. So the drummer doesn't have to follow a click track, you can just play and Ableton will automatically follow the tempo of your drummer. Then you can select the input channel, for example, you could select the hi-hat microphone or the overhead of the drummer and Ableton will follow the tempo in real time. All you have to do then is turn on follow and this feature is enabled. Next up, the follow actions feature in Ableton has gotten an update. Before you could only use it in the arrangement view on clips, but you can now also use it in the session view on scenes. So as you can see, now there is little numbers next to my master channel. And if I make my master channel bigger, you see we have different tempos and time signatures that we can set for each scene, which is really nice. I'm not too big of a user of the session view, so I'm not going to go in depth about this, but there is some very good tutorials about this on YouTube from certified Ableton trainers, so I will have linked one down below with a full tutorial on how this new feature works. Then there is some more new sounds called voice box, mood reel, drone lab, upright piano, bass quartet and string quartet. But again, I cannot find these in my instrument list or in my sound list 
So I suppose they will be there in the full version of Ableton Live 11. Then also the way folders are organized has changed in Ableton Live 11. As you can see, if we go to the audio effects, everything is in a different folder. So if you've been an Ableton user for a long time, this will take some getting used to. Then finally, before we end the video, I want to take a look at some smaller changes that I think are also really nice, but most people will look over them. So if we go into the preferences and we go to the look slash feel, we can now increase or decrease the grid line intensity. I think this is a really nice feature because in some projects I don't like to record on the grid and even when you set the grid to off there are still lines visible so I can just turn them off now. In the top right corner the CPU meter. As you can see there is now this arrow to open a menu. In here we can see the average CPU usage and the current CPU usage and we can switch between what is showcased right here by selecting either average or current. Then we can also enable or disable the CPU overload indication and we can turn the audio engine off or on by clicking right here. We can also immediately go to the audio configuration by clicking there. And then lastly in the top right corner in Ableton Live 10 there was this drive overload indicator and it has now been updated to also show the CPU overload. So instead of just turning red it will show CPU or disk in this little box. And then there was also some changes to max for live and push but I'm not going to go over that in this video. Now I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this make sure to leave a like and if you want to see more by me consider subscribing. I make videos about free plugins, tutorials, making music and more. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Matt Flank. Peace out.